Hi friends, how are you today? Welcome to another episode of Helping Hands Craft Corner. Today I'm dressed a little bit more casually because we are going to be finger painting some zoo animals. So before we get into that, let's read a book so we can get some ideas of the things we could paint. Today's story is Dear Zoo by Rod Campbell. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. They sent me an elephant. He was too big. I sent him back. So they sent me a, can you guess? A giraffe, but he was too tall. I sent him back. So they sent me a, ooh, a lion. But he was too fierce. I sent him back. So they sent me a camel. Look at his one hump there. But he was too grumpy. I sent him back. So they sent me a A snake. He was too scary. I sent him back. So they sent me a oh I see him peeking. A monkey. But this monkey was too naughty. I sent him back. So, they sent me a little frog, but he was too jumpy. I sent him back. So, they thought very hard and sent me a, any guesses? Oh, a puppy. He was perfect. I kept him. All right. So now we're ready to create our finger painting animals. I thought we could start with an elephant. So first of all, I think you would like to have obviously paint, some paint brushes and a clean piece of paper, um, probably also a plate to put it on. And depending on what animals you want, you'll need different colors. So starting with an elephant, we're actually gonna use the palm of our hand. I already have some gray that I've mixed um, black and white together to, to create. And because elephants are quite big and they have kind of short feet. I'm only going, I'm not going to paint my fingertips. I'm only going to paint the, these uh, two thirds of my hand or my finger, I should say, but I'm going to paint the whole palm the rest of the way. So I'm going to get some more paint. Okay. Okay. 
Now I'm going to just press my hand firmly down and pull my fingers up carefully. All right, now I'm going to fill in this part here, fill in his legs. And connect the thumbprint here. And you can see this is the elephant's head right here, his trunk, his big old body, and his four stumpy legs. Okay, now let me just clean up this hand so we can do it again for another animal. All right, we're back. This time I thought we could try to make a giraffe. So we're gonna to have to do something a little bit different because instead of having a trunk that goes down, an elephant has a neck that comes up and extends quite far. So I'm gonna only paint my hand first. some more yellow paint. And because giraffes have long legs, I'm going to paint the whole length of my fingers this time, all the way down to the fingertips. And once more, I'm going to press down and try to press the whole length. Let's see if I can do a little better this time. Yeah. Okay, that's a good body. Again, coloring in where it didn't transfer to the paper. You can see these legs look a lot longer compared to this body. And if you don't have a paintbrush, or if you want to continue finger painting to connect or fill out these parts, that's good too. So now, obviously the most important part of the giraffe is the head. So I'm going to actually close my hand like this and only paint along the outside of my thumb. Okay, so now I'm going to give a thumbs up and put that thumb at the, so it goes up from the palm print. There. <laughs> See, and it even has a nice little curve to it. There. Okay, so another friend of ours from the book was something actually kind of small, a frog. So I have some nice green here. And instead of opening my hand, I am going to just close into a fist, paint the palm of my hand, whatever is showing, and the tops of my fingers. And then I'm just going to press it down right here. Stand up and try to get more contact. And now, actually this kind of looks like a turtle too. <laughs> so you know, frogs have these nice four legs.
and something else I will do to make it look more like a frog with my, well, let's do it with the finger. I was gonna do it with my brush. Let's do it with the finger, dip it in the paint, and just give him two little dots on top, which will kind of represent the eyes. There. Boop. So I have space on my page for one more animal and I thought I would try to do one that wasn't in the book. Let's see how we do. I'm gonna clean up first. Okay, I think we're ready. So for this animal, I made a pink color by mixing red with white. And I thought we would try to make a flamingo. So as you may know, flamingos are birds, so they only have two legs. And again, they have this nice long neck. So, because we don't need all four of our fingers, we're only gonna paint the first two. And then we're also only going to put paint on half of our palm. Okay, and again, I'm gonna leave the thumb out for now. to make sure I have enough room for the head. Put him right here. Okay, connect those long legs. Fill out his body here. Okay, now the same way that we did the giraffe, going to do the flamingo's neck. I'm going to actually use my other thumb because I'm going to have it go this way. I think it looks more like the bird's body is facing this way. So again, I'm going to give a thumbs up. Just painting on the outside of my thumb. And if you think of a, the way a flamingo looks, they tend to have their necks bent. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hook my thumb like this, bend it down, and then I'm gonna place it where I think it would go. just like that. Nice, it's definitely easier to do a four-legged animal since we have four fingers. Let me clean up one last time and then we're going to try to add some detail so they really look a lot more like the animals that we're intending them to be. All right, now that these have had a little time to dry and I'm all cleaned up, we can start adding some detail. So I have a little bit of brown. I have a smaller little paintbrush. And for the elephant, I think some of the defining features might be these little lines that they have on their trunk going up. And then of course a big ear, so you're gonna make a C. Hmm, I should get some black out here so we can make a dot for the eye. Actually, first I'm going to use some gray 
give him a little tail. If you think of how an elephant's tail looks, it is pretty short and skinny. And then at the end, they have all these tufts of hair, so you can maybe give it a little tuft. I'm gonna wipe this off, and now I'm going to give him a little black dot for an eye. Ta-da! Oh, that looks great. Um, some things we can do with the giraffe. First, I'm just gonna take a little yellow and we're going to put two straight lines going up. They have these funny little tufts on top of their head. Giving them a little more of a snout too. <laughs> and on top of those tufts, they also have a little bit of brown. Okay, now that we have brown on our paintbrush, we can make little squarish dots all over the body. You can do them on the legs, on the neck. You can make some big dots, some small dots. And then the last thing you could add, well, two things. Again, get a little yellow, give him a little tail, just like the elephant, add a little tail with a little tiny tuft of brown hair at the end. I think it's a little bit more hair there. And of course, his little eye. There we go. These look great. Um, the only things we need to add for the flamingo are first a beak, so I got some brown, and I'm going to arch it down, curve it down, and then connect it back. There's that, and his eye. Perfect. Now the frog. His eyes, what I've made up here, those little dots I made are still a little bit wet, but I'm going to try to add some white. The center first. You could also probably use yellow. Frogs tend to have yellowish, brownish kinds of eyes. I'm gonna wait a little bit for that to dry and while I'm waiting I'm gonna use a little bit of gray and create a little mouth. 
I think frogs tend to have a little bit of a frowny <laughs> face. Sometimes some frogs have some brown spots on them, so you can just give them some freckles. Mostly on the top. I wouldn't put too many below his mouth or on his legs. Okay. And you could give him a little pink tongue, but I think I'm just going to put some black dot right in the middle for his eyes. And there you have it, a whole zoo of animals that we've made just with our hands, some paint, and with the help of a, a little brush sometimes. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let's get a close-up look. There's the elephant. giraffe flamingo and our little friend the frog I hope you guys had a wonderful time reading a book and finger painting some animals with me today we could have done any number of animals um, the only limit is your imagination you just have to think of how many legs it has, what kind of head shape um, and neck it has, and any other special features. Just give a little thought to it before you put the paint on your hand and then add those details in later. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll be seeing you guys later.